adventure connecting our lives to help us survive so we spend our time to the fullest we can we're seeing our lives have purpose engaging our days to find better ways and Welcome to This Dementia Life, created by Dementia Action Alliance. I'm proud to be your host, Monica Downer. During our This Dementia Life podcast, we have conversations with inspiring people living with dementia and amazing people that care about us. My guest today is Anitra Masasero, also called Nia. At age 19, Nia joined the Air Force rising the ranks to Senior Master Sergeant, or E8, of nine ranks. During her service, she earned an MBA, various certifications, and was the first sergeant, and was a first sergeant in the Air Force. In, nine, no, in 2017, at the age of 42, Nia was diagnosed with younger onset Alzheimer's disease and retired after 22 years of military service. In 2022, her diagnosis was changed to chronic traumatic encephalopathy and traumatic brain injury. Nia's newfound call, calling is helping increase concern and awareness of dementia. She's very active dementia advocate and has shared her story with local media and audiences. Finally, she is the reigning Miss Meridian Idaho 2024 and will compete for the state title in April 2024. Welcome, Mia. Thank you, Monica. It's a pleasure to be here today. You are such an inspiration to so many people. Tell us about your career before dementia. Okay, so my career before dementia, I was a career Air Force uh, enlisted member. Um, as you stated earlier, I was a senior master sergeant at E8. Um, and my uh, by trade, I was a first sergeant and a medic. Um, mm -hmm. I took care of people, you know, in the hospital and through various units all throughout the Air Force bases and deployed locations. Okay, wow. How did your initial diagnosis of Alzheimer's and then CTE impact your life? Wow, that was how it impacted my life. It was very difficult because, you know, I did all the work. I did all the right things. I, you know, I exercised, I ate right. I went to school. I got my degrees. I got my certificate. I did everything in preparation for retiring and then starting prison ministry. And also my hope was to start a nonprofit. So four months after I retired, I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and that just, it destroyed my, my, my view of what my future was gonna be. Right. Because I already was having all the symptoms. So I knew that something wasn't right. And I knew I wouldn't be able to perform in those in those capacities, you know, being in prison ministry and running my own nonprofit, I just didn't think I would be able to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So it really did. Um, it took me about a year after my diagnosis to finally lift myself up out of a major depression. I can imagine. Can you share your story that led you to participate in the Miss Idaho pageant? Oh, so, um, when I was younger, I was a pageant. I was in pageants. And so it's been 30 something years, which is crazy oh. that I'm finally competing in another one, but it's a bucket list. Mm -hmm. I saw a lady um, and I can't remember if it was you. I can't remember who it was, but they sent me a picture of Miss, Mrs. Colorado. Mm -hmm. And she was an African-American woman and Alzheimer's Association was also her platform. Okay. So mm -hmm. 
it was just an inspiration. And I, I realized I did the research and there, I found a pageant out here that I could compete in that I didn't age out of yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I've made my platform um, surrounding dementia, younger onset um, dementia and busting those, combating those stigmas. Okay. Well, that leads us to our next question. How do you plan to use the platform of Miss Idaho to make a positive impact on your community or beyond? So that is, that's a big one for me because being in my forties, and having a dementia and looking the way that I do, nobody would ever think that I had these hidden disabilities. So true. And so I've made my platform Memories Matter, combating younger onset dementia stigmas. And I, I'm using this platform to show people that, you know, if you really think about it, the, the late onset dementia, there's it happens in stages mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it happens decades before you see people, you know, in late later stages. So we need to intervene early so that we can treat or diagnose, then treat, then hopefully cure these things. Okay. As a person living with dementia, have you needed any accommodations while running for Miss Idaho? Yes. And I've been blessed that they've actually made accommodations. Um, I kind of talked about with one of the directors, my cognitive impairments. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I opened up about what that I'm me because I put that in my platform that mm -hmm. I'm a person living with dementia. And, um, and I told her, I, I believe I told her that on pageant day, because the schedule from last year was so intense. There was an interview and then you have all of your events, but in between you have your makeup, your spray tans, you have all of these things, meetings. And I told her that I would, if she you know, saw me to the side or in my quiet time, that's why, because I get you know, a lot of neuro fatigue from overstimulation. Yeah. And they actually moved the interview from Saturday to Friday. So we don't have a full day of events. Okay. okay. And we also have a lot of contestants or delegates this year too. So I'm sure that had something to do with it. So probably me talking about that was probably just the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, okay. I'm sure it wasn't moved just for me, but I was thankful for it. Okay. That's amazing for you to take that on. Um, one last question. Nia, what advice or suggestion would you give to someone newly diagnosed? So I have a few pearls of wisdom that I learned along my journey. And one, the first one would be to breathe. <laughs> be calm, have a calm level head. Um, and the next one would be to contact the Alzheimer's Association. I would say, get your affairs in order. Mm -hmm. I would say, watch the movie Still Alice. I would say, make a bucket list. I really would, because you would be amazed the things that, you know, you've, you've wanted to do that you haven't done or things you didn't think you would be able to do, but you can do now because likely you might be retired or, you know, you might, you might still be working, but you just never know how life is going to turn out. So I was I would say definitely for someone that's newly diagnosed, I would give them those pearls of wisdom. And I would say get involved with support groups. If you could find a support group such as the Memory Warriors, the Dementia Action Alliance, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the National Council of Dementia Minds, there are several several support groups and you will meet like-minded, like-diagnosed people that will help you along the way and you'll become a family. Mm. Those are some great suggestions, Nia. Thank you. So Nia, I just want to thank you for joining us today and sharing your information about your life journey. We wish you all the best in the pageant in April. Thank you so much. I, you know, this was a, an awesome opportunity. You're very easy to talk to. I was able to answer the questions and, you know, thank you. I appreciate your support. Okay.
also want to thank you for joining DA DAA for this Dementia Life. More podcasts and valuable resources are available at daanow.org. You can help continue these podcasts and other programs that enhance the lives of the dementia community with a donation at daanow.org slash donate. Dementia Action Alliance is committed to enhancing lives, connecting people, and increasing understanding. I am your host, Monica Downer. Remember, the brain may forget, but the heart never will. We can, so we can.